have some rather upsetting news tonight. Um, Nick, I'm not sure if you're aware if Mother has informed you that our great aunt Shirley had a massive stroke on Saturday morning and then later died Saturday afternoon. So, uh, sorry if that this is the first you're hearing of that. Um, something eh, to kind of think about, though, is I'm happy that it went so quickly because otherwise, you know, the doctors had said that she wasn't uh, going to be able to regain speech. She would have uh, no mobility. So it really was the best way to go. So there's that news. Um, she also had a do not resuscitate order if she were to be in a compromising position like that, which kind of, and I'm glad, finally got our parents to start thinking because, you know, Shirley was only, is only 76, um, so not that much older than our parents. Kind of a fun, just to, to make light of the situation, I thought it was rather humorous that um, I suppose our cousin, Kenny, which is her son, had wanted Aunt Mona and Mother to be pallbearers at the funeral. I, I just don't know if he just hasn't seen Aunt Mona in a little while, but I don't think her claw hands would quite fit, you know, around the coffin. Um, I, granted, Shirley had lost a considerable amount of weight since her accident earlier this year. Um, she only weighs like 30 pounds, but still, I thought that was a little humorous. So our father is going to be a pallbearer instead in lieu of them. So there's that news. I'm um, also on the death front. So mother kind of let me know tonight that um, I am going to be, you know, they're getting their will put together, their living will, and they're not even getting a real afterlife will. It's something called like five wishes, and I guess it's legal. But that's what they want to do is some five wishes. And um, I will be the medical, I don't know, necessarily like liaison to when both of them are in positions like Shirley was this last weekend, which is really funny to me. You know, Mom just said that uh, because <laughs> the last time she was here, we were watching something where they had to pull the plug. Oh, we were watching Weeds. And I don't know what season it was, but yeah, you were here actually that weekend. And so we were uh, talking about pulling the plug. And I go, well, you know, Mom, I have no problem doing that to you because I don't like you. I have no faith that you will come back miraculously. And she's like, oh, Erica. And I was like, no, it'll happen. And so I think it's really odd that she has put me in, in charge of both her and Dad's uh, medical because I'm close, you know, so close to them. However, when it comes to finances, like selling the house and getting graveyard preparations, no one amongst the five of us, except you, Nick, are to be trusted, she decided. But she is going to place it in the... The responsibility is going to be joint between Nicholas and myself. So I think this is going to be a problem once the others are informed of this. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So, um, there's that news. In regards to me saying your president, I say that to pretty much everything around me. Like, yesterday I told your cousin, who really is your cousin, so I can use that phrase, I said, your bird is being punished, even though she's obviously my bird. So, yeah, I, I fling that phrase, or your boss said to do this. You know, I, I use it for everything, and I get that from Cousin Janie. Uh, lastly, um, in regards to being, using the phrase abort a situation, you know, and again, kind of going back to things that you pro probably shouldn't say at work, but just slipped out, was that uh, something was going on where there was a situation and I didn't like the situation. The person was approaching me about it. I go, you know, I just want you to get rid of it like an unwanted pregnancy. And the person I said it to had just had her third baby. So probably not the person to say that to. I don't really give a shit. 